This is the part two answer key for the August 2014 passage about the neighborhoods, the long time. All right, so I'm on question six, which asks the comparison in line 73 through 78 emphasizes the neighborhoods what? So now I'm going to look at those lines. I'm going to look a little bit above. So desolation takes on a comical aspect in such places. And that only makes the people living there all the more dejected. Putting it in harsher terms, the whole place bore a certain resemblance to a heap of rubble. With the leaves falling in early winter, all we see are broken bricks and shattered tiles, like an aging beauty who retains her alluring profile. It can no longer bear scrutiny. So like a beauty who like is aging, getting older, and no, no longer looks good. So that that's interesting line to me about the neighborhood. Something that no longer looks good. Should you insist on searching for a trace of her former charm? After all, not everything is erased. You would have to look for it in the turn of the alley. Okay, so now I'm going to look back. Oh, through 78. I didn't go all the way. Left here, right there, as if glancing coquettishly, which means flirtatiously, from side to side. But the eyes that are so flirtatious are also getting on in years. They've lost their luster and are incapable of grabbing hold of your attention. Soon, sleep began to come down. That was the frigid past, accumulated over generations, turning to water before it even hit the ground. So it's talking about how it doesn't, it's no longer has the appeal it once had or the beauty it once had is what it's talking about. It's lost its luster, incapable of grabbing attention. So now let me look at the choices. So, is it talking about its... First, I'm going to look at just one word. It's vitality, its strength, its importance, its beauty. Well, it does seem like it was talking about its beauty. So, lasting beauty. Maybe. Former vitality. Well, so it was talking how former means how it used to be vital or like lively and beautiful. So that actually looks right. Enduring strength. Is it talking about its strength? And that it endure means it goes on. So no, two is wrong. Its past importance. It is talking about its past. So, but not its importance, more about its life and beauty. So three is wrong. Two and three I would cross out right away. So is it talking about its lasting beauty or its former, like, life and energy? I'm going to say it's talking about its former because it, its beauty is not lasting. It's not ongoing. So number one is the right answer. Okay, seven, the reference to the seasons. So I know it was talking about the winter and frigid right here. The sleep began to come down. The ground is frigid, turning to water before it even hit the ground. So that's a very dark, sad image. You know, winter usually means like things are gloomy. So let me see what the choices are. The reference to the seasons in the final paragraph conveys a sense of anticipation. Definitely not. Loss. Well, that's negative. I know that the, the winter season has a negative feeling, so maybe it's loss. Uh, hope. Definitely not. It's not hopeful or worthlessness. So it's either two or four. So is it conveying a sense of loss or worth it being worthless? So I'm going to say, because it's talking about how it used to be beautiful and now it's not anymore and winter's come, I'm gonna, it, is, it is loss. The answer is two. It's talking about the loss. Number eight, the author's description of the people's prayers 
and the neighborhood, the long tang, stresses what? Um, well, their prayers, they were just praying for peace, but they didn't really get it. <laughs> they didn't get any peace. They just continued to go on and not do anything and just pray. So, is it talking about um, the futility of their situation? You might not know what futility means, so that makes it difficult. Uh, you try to think of when you've heard the word before, like um, that's futile. To continue doing that is futile. So you, we'll move on. Is it talking about the security of their future? Definitely not. So that could be crossed out. Is it talking about the importance of their traditions? No, that can be crossed out. Is it talking about the complexity of their needs? Well, so you might think that their prayers are talking about their needs. So one and four are the two that you'd be looking at. But they, their needs are not really complex, you know. So that's not the right answer. The answer is the futility of their situation. The prayers stress that futility means like there's no point and there's no use in them. They're not doing any good. So that is the answer, number one. And then nine, overall, the author's view of the people of the Long Tang could best be described as, so intolerant means he doesn't tolerate them. They're, he's, he's like judging them. He's not accepting of them. No, he's not judging them. Is it objective? Like you don't, he doesn't feel a certain way about them. He's just giving you information. No, I feel like he feels bad for them. So is it sympathetic? I think it is. I think he feels like it's sad. A lot of the images and words make you, you know, feel bad for them. So I think it's sympathetic. And ambiguous uh, means you don't really know how he feels. Maybe you don't know that word. But the root word ambi means both, like he feels both ways. So... It's not that. The answer is three. He feels sympathetic. He feels bad for them. Okay, check and see how you did and give Miss Buddison your score.